David the Marine. Let me see your war face. What was that demonstration all about? It's to, to show a history of the different kinds of shooting stances with handguns. The first one being, of course, the dueling stance. I say, here you are about to face down Fair Montague on the field of honor. I, as your second, will stand safely by and watch you get slaughtered or slaughter. Sounds good to me. I'm going to use my trusty flintlock. <laughs> I have one first shot. <laughs> Sir Montague had been slaughtered. Better get him one of those Jaguar hearses we've been seeing so much of lately. Back in the day, it definitely had its advantages, but what are the pros and cons? Well, the pro is you are presenting a narrower profile of your body, most people anyway, uh, uh -huh. to the uh, uh, antagonist uh, versus like this so there's that the downside is you're holding a uh, three to five pound gun at arm length not very steady so and you're got... probably scared too so well that too <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna shoot back at you but other than that yeah. it's hard to keep it steady hey there did i <laughs> what's the next chance we're gonna have a look at <laughs> we're gonna call it the gunfighter stance or hip shooting uh, like if I had this in a holster in my hip and I got uh, a black part down there trying to, to kill me, we do a, a shootout because Hollywood says so. Yeah, I know it, did I, when I call it, did I? <laughs> I've always thought they quit training that a long time ago. Well, uh, that was kind of an honor of my brother. He does all the shooting from the hip, don't you know? Ah. And uh, so that, that was an actual shot from the hip about 15 yards. Uh, I'll take it. Yep. Can't do it every time, turns out. <laughs> no, um, and, if you're, and if you're in an emergency situation, I, no, take the time to come on out and get a good sight. Right, because you can't see where, where the, 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 the sights are. You have to feel it, and it takes a lot of time with a gun to be able to sense where it's pointing just by how you're holding it. And most people, that's not going to apply to most people. So one of the more famous uh, gunslingers in the West was Wild Bill Hickok. And he made a shot about 75 yards against Dave Tut across the square. And he rested his arm across his opposite arm. And he made the shot that killed Dave Tut right through the heart. That killed Dave Tut right through the heart. Again, I don't buy it. Well, not it, for me. This is st steady the the aim for one shot, for because after that you got to find it all over again. Uh, it worked for Wild Bill Hickok, so it does have a little bit utility. Also worked for the Charlie's Angels, turns out. <laughs> but there are better ways. The age of the FBI. The FBI inspired by Jelly Bryce, uh, Oklahoman actually. Ah. Uh, he came up with. He's a gifted guy. He can see bullets in flight. I'm told. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was off. <laughs> and he can fix it. Bang! Nine millimeter. Yeah. Bang! 45. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, he came up with, for, and the uh, FBI adopted, you want to crouch, bring this, the gun up like this, because why? You crouch to put him on level with his belt buckle. Ah. I don't know why you want to shoot the guy in the belt buckle. And then you put your arm across your chest in case he shoots at you. He can... You know, try and have your arm where the bullet's going to go to minimize penetration into your body. So that was what the FBI came up with. They did a lot of training at seven yards. Uh, I also think that that lower portion of your intestine, that's also where you're more apt to either hit uh, your, your large intestine or the liver. And it's gruesome, but that is the organ that would kill you within 40 minutes. So, And 40 minutes is nothing in a gunfight. <laughs> but that's one of the advantages. The disadvantage, I mean, really? Might, yeah. <laughs> At close range, it'll work for, you know, fast, you know, quick, dirty work, Don't which you? is what Jelly Bryce did a lot of. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but if you have a longer shot or something else, you need to use those sights to line them up. And so, it went to the next one. Got a two-hand shooting. I call this a dirty Harry, 
Because in the first movie, he grabs his wrist. What's wrong with this? It's great because you sport from here on back. Problem is, it goes out here. And your wrist is going to take all the recoil. In his case, the 44 Magnum. Even with the oil shooting light specials, it, it's hard to keep some accuracy when you're doing that. So what they came up to in, after that was what we call a cup and saucer. You put in the, like this is the cup, put into the saucer. So you get both on the gun, but you watch what happens. I'm way up here. I'm okay for the single shot slow fire, but I'm not too good for rapid fire because it's gonna start going all over the place because I got no support that way. And next, we have the isosceles where you face the target straight on. If you're a cop, you're wearing a vest, so you're presenting most of the vest to your assailant. Your feet are a little more in shoulder width apart. Your arms are locked, come straight in front of you, forming an isosceles triangle, and you shoot like this. This works with you when you have a six pound 38 special revolver shooting these little poofer loads, but you have no stability front to back. So rapid fire, even with a nine. And I go up like a zipper. Weaver stance, 45 degree angle to the target. Gun side pushes the gun forward like 60% of the pressure applied to the gun is with your support hand, support arm. This hand in front catches it, pulls down, elbow down, so you have isometric tension there. So you got tension before you fire the first shot. You got a nice little four shot group out there because you're controlling the, the recoil before you even fire the first shot. And what's the negative about the Weaver? Well, Weaver beats anything we did up to this point, but the problem with Weaver is it's hard to maintain that pressure. And this joint is called a ball and socket. And all we're doing, because it's got a lot of mobility, and all we're doing is trying to stabilize this one joint. And it's better than everything else so far. And for a couple decades, this ruled. But it's not the best technique there is. Which is gangsta. In Gangster, you turn the gun sideways, not because it makes you shoot better, but because it just looks really bad and intimidating. And while you're shooting, you point the gun down range with every shot because that helps the bullet get to the target that much faster. Okay, Lee, I want you to try it, but there's two, two caveats here. I want you to actually try. I got some jam going on in here. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But there's no music. <laughs> Beside the point. Two, two caveats. I want you to actually try and hit the target, which is uh, seven yards away. And the shots can't leave the range. You can't shoot over the backstop. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go. <laughs> I see one hit. Yo, yo, yo. Which is one more than I would have yo, thought. Yo, 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 and it got there this much faster. It did, I saw that. <laughs> and finally, we have evolved to... Right now, the best technique is called modern isosceles. You spread your feet out, so front and back, shoulder width apart. You have a slide forward bias. Your hands come forward, you lock the elbows, then break them. And we have a 70% a with the support hand, 30% on the gun hand and that allows you to get some rapid fire accuracy on target. Like that. All you need. That's got everything you need. Holding it steady, handling recoil, good for single shot, good for rapid fire. It's uh, the hard part is for people to remember to go 7% with the support hand and 30% with the, uh, the gun hand. It's like this is the vice holding the gun steady while this does all the action against the gun. And that allows you to uh, maintain accuracy. You're already uh, managing recoil before you fire the first shot. We cannot eliminate recoil, but we can manage it. Our goal then is to manage it consistently. Boom, back down, boom. So you were with just a shot before, so you can fire again. And all you're doing is monitoring the sights, make sure they're there. More information you need in a short video, but go out there to the range and see what technique works best for you. And it's fun to try some of these other techniques too, just to say, oh man, that's <laughs> uh, or, hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that sucks, and now I know why. Yes. And as always, guns, guns for, for everybody. everybody.